Hello, this is Carrie with Dark Side of the Library. I'm here with my co-host Katie, and today we are talking about dark children's books coming out in April 2023. They are some fun, cute ones, and I love children's books, and I collect them, etc. So, Katie, you are starting off with the first book today. What do you have on your list? It oh, and by the way, we don't have any of these yet. We haven't read them or looked through them. We just researched and found out about them and put them in our shopping carts. Yeah, yes, exactly. And presented them to you because you might want <laughs> to check them out as well. So my first book is called The Forgotten Creation, Stitch Head. This came out April 4th. This is by Guy Bass and Pete Williamson is the illustrator. Uh, so apparently, okay, so here's what it says. Mad Professor Erasmus created Stitch Head when he was only 10 years old. <laughs> and, and the two promised to be friends forever. But when Erasmus grew up, he wanted to create more and more monsters, each one more grotesque than the last. And Stitchhead was forgotten. Aww. But he is fairly loyal to his master. Stitchhead took on the responsibility of caring for the Mad Professor's creations. When an evil entertainer named Fulbert Freak Finder... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, comes to town and promises to make Stitch Head famous. He's skeptical at first, but gradually warms to this idea. Then he learns of Freak Finder's true intentions and is thrown into an adventure of a lifetime. This is adorable. So this is for reading ages 7 through 10 years old, grade level 2 through 5. It is very, very cute. It However, is if I may... Rudely butt in. No. It's a little derivative Burton-esque. Yes. On the cover, they have this woeful looking little boy with striped shirt and striped stockings. And there's a bunch of mm, spiral tentacles on the cover and the story of a little boy making a creature. It's a little bit Tim Burton, but I'll still buy it. <laughs> Yes. So this is The Forgotten Creation, Stitch Head, uh, by Guy Bass and Pete Williamson. My first book today is I See a Bat. Oh, yay! It has a puppy on the cover, too. It's part of the I Like to Read series for preschool to age three. The publisher's Holiday House. The author is Paul Meisel. I see a bat. I see stars. I see the moon. It's easy to read text and fun pictures that follow a dog through the nighttime. Okay. Sitting inside his house by his empty bowl, the dog watches the nightly sights outside until he falls asleep. And when morning comes, his favorite boy comes to fill his empty bowl. This is a great bedtime book for people that like bats and possibly are a little batty themselves or have a goth kid or grandbaby. It's I See a Bat by Paul Meisel. My next book is Clyde the Kraken Wants a Friend. <laughs> I'll be your friend, Clyde. I know. Uh, it comes out April 25th. This is by Brooke Hartman and Laura Borio is the illustrator. This is perfect for pre-summer. It's, it's you know, we've got a Kraken. It's summertime feels, but it's still kind of creepy. And the Kraken could not be cuter. <laughs> he is so cute. So uh, this is a hilarious story story it's about a hug loving kraken who learns sometimes that it's just better to keep your tentacles to yourself <laughs> so clyde the kraken loves nothing more than a good hug oh but whenever he tries to hug the animals in the ocean they all swim away then one day the colossal creature's monstrous embrace takes down an entire pirate ship <laughs> And the shipwreck wrecked Buccaneers surprise Clyde and the reader with a valuable lesson of emotional literacy. Ooh, okay, we've got a good message here. While many friends love to hug, some prefer other ways to greet their mates. <laughs> so this is really cheerful, really cute, but we have like a really adorable, quirky, charming Kraken to go along with this and learning how to create boundaries or understanding where people's heads are at. This is Clyde the Kraken Wants a Friend. This is by Brooke Hartman and Laura, Laura Borio. My next book is The Little Vampire Moves In. Ooh. Rudolph the Little Vampire moves into Tony's apartment building in this spooky and funny second book in the classic middle grade Little Vampire series. It's perfect for readers who love Hotel Transylvania and the Adams Family. 
So Rudolph has been banished from his family's vault over his association with humans, and he now lives in the basement of the apartment building where his human best friend Tony lives. And the two struggle to keep Rudolph hidden from Tony's parents and nosy neighbors, as they should. There's a cute little vampire sleeping in a coffin on the cover. It is grade level 3 to 7, or age 8 to 12 years, and the publisher is Aladdin. That's The Little Vampire Moves In by Angela Sommer Bodenberg. Came out, or comes out April 25. My next book, I actually have it with me, which is great. So this is Louise Bourgeois, or Bourgeois Made Giant Spiders and Wasn't Sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is by Fausto Gilberti, and they've done books about art, like famous artists uh, throughout history and have made them more palatable for the little ones. It's very cute. This is a picture book, and it came out April 12th, and it's for reading ages four through seven. So Louise was a world-famous artist, and she told her story uh, through many kinds of mediums, like sculpting pieces. She used everyday art, like you know, sewing, all kinds of stuff, and her story is really fun. So her famous giant spiders fascinate and sometimes terrify art level lo lovers to this day. But the truth behind the inspiration for these towering sculptures is not as scary as it may seem. This is a very inspiring story about a young girl who became the first female sculptor to have a solo exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. It's awesome. So this is super cute, especially if you do have uh, probably kids who were like me when I was seven years old, little artists who have a little bit of a dark part in their soul who like spiders. Are so there this, pictures of spiders inside that people who are scared of spiders probably wouldn't even pick up the book, but right. is it safe to look through or? I think a little bit. Uh, there are some pictures of the spider. I mean, you can kind of see, but as you... Mm -hmm. And it's towards the end, so you kind of get familiarized with Louise and the thought process behind the spiders before getting to the spider, which I think is fine. But again, if you are terrified of bugs, like my little niece is terrified, I would never, ever read this to her. Okay. Good <laughs> so, to know. <laughs> yes, do not get this if you have anti-bug people in your life. So this is Louise Bourgeois Made Giant Spiders and Was Not Sorry by Fausto Gilberti. My next book is The Night Tent by Blair, or Landis Blair. It came out April 18. It's a picture book for preschool to grade three. It's a bedtime book. A boy struggling to fall asleep peeks beneath his covers to find a world filled with nighttime adventures under a starry, tented sky. I love this. Aww. So Watson's having trouble sleeping. He lies awake at light, doing his best not to think about the lurking, creeping things that might be hiding in his closet or under his bed. But the more he tries, the harder it gets. But then he notices a mysterious light coming from under his covers. When he takes a peek, he discovers a beautiful, tended night sky full of twinkling stars. And because he isn't sleepy... He follows a path the stars show him. It leads him through a forest and onto an adventure that includes friendly creatures and a magical trolley ride to a tiny island with a very tall tower and finally sleep. Aww. I am so buying this book. It's The Night Tent by Landis Blair. That's so cute. So my next book isn't super dark. It's definitely more sword and sorcery, but I wanted to present it to you because there's a lot of monsters in here and some witchiness. It is called Once There Was. It came out April 4th. This is by Kiosh Monsef, and it's steeped in Iranian uh, mythology, which is very, very cool. So it's about a Iranian-American girl who discovers that her father was secretly a veterinarian to mythical creatures. And she has to now take up the mantle despite the many, many dangers. I love this. It's so cute. <laughs> so began the stories Marjan's father told her as a little girl. Fables like the story of the girl who sprung up or sprung a unicorn from a hunter's snare or the nomad boy who rescued a baby shirtle, which I've never heard of. Tales of extraordinary beasts that filled her with curiosity and wonder. But Marjan's not a little girl anymore in the wake of her father's sudden death she is trying to hold it all together her, her schoolwork friendships and keeping her dad's shoestring veterinarian practice from going under 
Then one day she receives a visitor who reveals something stunning. Marjan's father was no ordinary veterinarian. The creatures out of the stories he told her were actually real and he traveled the world to care for them. And now that he's gone, she has to take his place. She steps into the world, uh, a secret world hidden in plain sight, where mythical creatures are bought and sold, treasured and trapped. She finds friends she never knew she needed, a charming British boy who grew up with a griffin, a runaway witch seeking magic and a home, while trying to hide her double life from her old friends and classmates. The deeper Margin gets into treating these animals, the closer she becomes, or she she comes to finding out who actually killed her father, and to a shocking truth that will reawaken her sense of wonder and put humans and beasts in gravest of danger. So again, not super dark, but really cute, more adventure. This is for reading ages 10 years and older, grade levels 5 through 6. This is Once There Was by Kiosh Monsef. My next book is Serafina and the Black Cloak, the oh, graphic novel. So beautiful. there was a series of books by Robert Beatty. Serafina and the Black Cloak was book one. Book two was Serafina and the Twisted Staff, and then The Splendid Heart, and then The Seven Stars. So this is now a graphic novel. Serafina has never had a reason to disobey her paw and venture beyond the grounds of Biltmore Estate. There's plenty to explore in her grand home, although she must take care to never be seen. None of the rich folk upstairs know that Serafina exists. She and her pa, the estate's maintenance man, have secretly lived in the basement for as long as she can remember. But when children at the estate start disappearing, Serafina knows who the culprit is, a terrifying man in a black cloak who stalks Biltmore's corridors at night. So she has a harrowing escape and she risks everything by joining forces with Brayden Vanderbilt, the young nephew of... Biltmore's owners. So this is kind of based on an imaginary version of history. They have to uncover the man in the black cloak's true identity before all the children vanish one by one. That's Serafina and the Black Cloak, the graphic novel, grade level three to seven, reading age eight to 12 years. The publisher is Disney Hyperion, and it came out on April 4. It sounds fun. That does sound fun. Next up is something I think a lot of people are really going to dig. It is Stranger Things, Heroes and Monsters. Choose Click. your own adventure. Buying yep. it. Freaking Buy. out. Love yes. this. Yes. I love Choose Your Own Adventure. So this is for reading ages 9 through 12 or honestly anybody. I love Choose Your Own Adventure. <laughs> uh, this came out April 18th. It's by Rana Tahir, Patrick Spaziti, and Catherine Spaziti as well. It is, again, a choose your adventure, own adventure. You join Eleven, Dustin, Max, Lucas, and all the rest of the gang and explore Penhurst Asylum, which is an old creepy creel house and possibly even a part of the Upside Down. The decisions you make will decide the fates of the characters and lead to unexpected, thrilling, and even deadly outcomes. So, obviously, if you love Stranger Things or if you have a kiddo who also loves Stranger Things, you might want to get the Stranger Things Heroes and Monsters Choose Your Own Adventure Story. This sounds super fun. And the art is kind of like a classic uh, 80s, you know, D&D art. I love it. So it's super fun. This is by Rana Tahir and Patrick Spaziti and Catherine Spaziti. My next book is Desma Decole, Ghost Patrol, book number 18, The Show Must Demon. I mean, I think they meant demon. <laughs> so this is a large series of books. It's great for reluctant readers, especially possibly boys that have a hard time sitting still, because it's about a ghost patrol. And what's worse than dealing with a demon? Being on stage in a school play with a demon in front of a live audience. Oh. Join Desmond and Andre as they act their way through the most cursed school play ever. It's meant for grade level kindergarten to eight to grade four or age five to nine years. It's book 18 of a 20 book series called Desmond Cole Ghost Patrol. Cute. All right. I think my final book of today is called True Evil, the first evil, the second evil and the third evil Fear Street. So it's all of the books together. <laughs> this is by R.L. Stein. You're going to, if you have any horror parts. level, yeah, you're going to have to get this. Uh, this came out April 4th, 
and it is 592 pages. Whoa. Yeah, grade level 9 through 12, so 14 years and up. So it probably could have gone under our YA, but it was like, maybe if. So two sisters try out for cheer- for the cheerleading squad, uh, only to get drawn into paranormal murderous legacy in this. Uh, it's, it is for teens. It's a har- harrowing teen horror trilogy from R.L. Stein. So we apologize. This should have been in our YA thing, but whoops, we mistakes were made. Give me a D-I-E. <laughs> oh, no. Die! Oh, sorry. Yay! I wished I had pom-poms. <laughs> uh, Corky and Bobby Korokoran want nothing more than to make the, the cheerleading squad at Shady Side High. But as soon as the sisters are named to the team, terrible things start to happen to the cheerleaders. Uh, first, there's a mysterious accident near the Fear Street Cemetery. Soon after, piercing screams echo through empty school halls and things only get more disturbing from there hooray can corky and bobby find out what's going on before the entire squad is slain (laughs) nothing is uh, ever truly laid to rest on fear street and the girls may lose more than they bargained for and their fight to survive so again this is three books all smashed into one that's why it's so long but this would be a really fun one to read especially before school starts up again. So if you have any teens who love horror novels, this would be a really excellent one to give them pre, you know, school starting up. This is called True Evil. This is by R.L. Stein. My final book today is Wizkit, An Adventure Overdue. It is a hardcover book by Tanya J. Scott, grade level three to seven, reading age eight to 12 years. It is a wild, enchanted, wonderful world out there. And a one-eyed cat named Wizkit calls it home. But Wizkit wouldn't know anything about that. As a wizard's apprentice, all of her lessons are indoors. And she's far too lazy to go out exploring. There's no need to. She already knows enough spells to conjure up delicious snacks whenever she's hungry. But when an overdue library book, oh, that reminds me, literally cries out to be returned, take me back, (laughs) Wizkit's teacher decides she must be the one to take it back. (gasps) Oh! Reluctantly and rather accidentally, the journey to the library begins. This sounds oh. really, really cute. <laughs> I'm going to have to check it out. It is Wizkit and Adventure Overdue by Tanya J. Scott, author and illustrator. Oh, cute. This is our list of children's books that we have found that were most appealing to us for April of 2023. That doesn't mean there aren't any others. There's probably plenty of other dark kid reads out there. We can't Um, find everything. There's so many. So make sure to check all of that out and to check out our previous podcast uh, episodes if you are looking for other dark reads, nonfiction adult fiction, comics, etc. And stay tuned for our May new book releases coming out. Um, Our episodes come out Wednesday and Friday, so keep that in mind. Make sure to spread the word, let other people know about Dark Side of the Library, and follow us on all of our socials at Dark Side of the Library. If you are on YouTube, you can find that in the description down below. And join us on our Amazon live channel, especially as Halloween approaches. I know it seems early, but it's not. I promise never you. Too early. <laughs> it's never too early. So we find a lot of cool stuff. Carrie's a research genius. So you'll find some really cool goth horror decorations or, you know, stuff like that if that's up your alley. Thanks so much. We will see you guys next time. <laughs>